بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ویلکم ٹو دا کورس کوڈ ای این جی فور ڈبل فائیو ٹو ڈیز لیکچر نمبر سیون ایز یو نو دیٹ وی اسٹارٹیڈ فرام وٹ لنگوسٹکس از اینڈ وٹ لینگویج از اینڈ دین وی موو ٹوڈز دا لیولز آف لینگویج ایز آئی ہیو ایکسپلین پریویسلی دیٹ دا لیولز آف دا لینگویج وتھ باٹم اپ اپروچ اسٹارٹ فرام دا فناٹکس the study of the human speech sound. It is the lowest level at which we can divide our language into the smallest indivisible part. So last week, if you remember, we have studied phonetics. Phonetics, the first level of language uh, from bot with bottom-up approach and it is the last level where we can easily distinguish the sounds. If we take sentence at the upper level, then sentence is made up of phrases, phrases is made up of words, words are made up of the sound chunks and sound chunks together they are made up of the smallest indivisible sounds and that level the lowest level was known as phonetics the phonetics is the study of human speech sound so last week uh, last three weeks we have studied in detail about phonetics and the three major branches of the phonetics that was articulatory phonetics acoustic phonetics and the auditory phonetics to recap a bit Acoust uh, articulatory phonetics is all about how the sounds are articulated by human beings by using different uh, speech organs as well as the different places and the manners of articulations are concerned with respect to articulatory phonetics. In acoustic phonetics, we were more concerned about how the sound waves they travel in air mean how they are transmitted from the body that produces it and towards the body that receives it. So in between it is all about the transmission of sound waves. We also discussed in detail what are the sound waves, what are the different features which are of very much importance with respect to, with respect to acoustic phoneticians. Then also we studied the auditory phonetics, which is all about how human beings, they receive sound. It means it is about the reception of human sound. So in auditory phonetics, we studied about the organs which involved in the reception of sound, that is ear, and then the organs that is involved in the perceptions of sound means the human brain. We did discussed in detail the uh, ear and we touched a little the brain, leaving it for another lecture on language and brain topic. So that was whatever we studied the last three weeks. And one of another important lecture was on the vowels and consonants. I must remind you that vowels and consonants, when I taught you, I told you to have a very good practice of the sound symbols and the phonetic symbols of English language because the way you pronounce a language, you if you know how to phonetically transcribe a different sound, then you are good, uh, quite good in using the dictionaries as well as you can become the good speakers of English language. So that was all about our previous lectures. So now, what we are going to d going to do today? Let's see phonology. Yes, our today's lecture is based on phonology. It is the first lecture on phonology because I have again divided the phonology into two areas. Today's lecture would be primarily based on the different items and the different terms that are used in phonology. These different uh, terms are like phones, the allophones, and phonemes, and minimal pairs, and free variations, and bound variations. All these uh, different terms, they are quietly used by the linguists. So today lectures would be based on what are these different features, how these are defined, what are the different uh, theories with respect to phonemes and how phonetics is different as well from phonology. So star, we will start with phonology today. What is phonology? That is our first question. 
Yes, what is phonology? Phonology itself is a made up of two Greek words, phono and logi. Phono, as uh, you I think know, that phono is stands for the sound. Phone, in English we call it phone. The same the way we have the word telephone, because the word phone means again sound. So phone is all about sound. And logi, logi in Greek it stands for the knowledge, a subject, a discussion, a word, a speech. So this way phonology stands for a subject, or a knowledge about sound. If we take the proper definitions of phonology, the phonology as a subject, as a discipline of linguistics, deals with the system and patterns of speech sounds in a language. So you can see the difference. In phonetics, the definition was the study of human speech sound. No word like pattern was there. No word like language was there because phonetic is all about the human speech sound regardless of any specific language. But phonology, it is not about only the human sound system but also the patterning of different sounds to combine them and the rules to combine them and to produce the different combinations of sound as well as it is related to a language means our because our scope is English linguistic so we will be dealing in detail with the phonology of English language phonology of a language is the is the system another definition is the system and pattern of speech sound again the two different words from phonetics are their system and speech we do not only study the human speech sound but we include specific system and the patterns of combination combining these human speech sounds i have taken some more definitions from different sources another definition phonology is the study of sound pertaining to the system of language it means the the subject of phonology it is very much related in a relation with the language because when I, in phonetics we say about the study of human speech sounds regardless of the sounds particular to a specific language but when we study phonology we have to define the language the particular language in which we are going to study that sounds systems as well as the sound patterns as opposed to phonetics which is the study of between language be of sound pertaining to the act of speech be, because in phonetics we are just uh, the, we are just concerned with that as human beings what are the different sound that i can produce like i can produce the sounds pa ba ta ka la ma fa but when i describe them with reference to my language there are certain sounds that are particular to my language like urdu and some sounds are there which are particular to the language that i know is english for example the ta sound is in english but ta with this it is the alphabet is te but sound is ta the ta sound is on urdu so phonetics is not concerned with urdu and english distinction rather it would take into account the, all the new sound that i can produce but phonology will divide it with respect to the different languages that what are the sounds which can be which can be related to a certain language the distinction between language and speech being basically sources distinction between lang and parole again if you remember if you have certain knowledge differed in and dissociate known as the father of modern linguistics we will discuss him in detail and his theories in our lectures on historical linguistics but the, his distinction was based on the difference between lang and parole lang is the knowledge of the language and parole is about the use of the language the same way we can describe the difference between phonetics and phonology 
Phonetics is the act of producing sound, but phonology is act of producing sound with reference to certain language and with reference to the rules in by which we use these sounds with respect to a certain language. According to Clark, another definition, 2007, phonology, it means the systematic use of sound to encode meaning in any spoken human language or the field of linguistics studying this use. Again, my focus is on human language. As human language, not speech, not only the production of the sound that I have ability to produce, but also with the respect to the language that I am focusing that I'm talking about and sound not only the sounds but the sounds which have certain meanings the sounds with respect to language they have the ability to encode meanings and when they are combined with the different different other sounds they have the ability to produce a word with certain meaning because phonology it allows the only a certain combinations of sound. It is not about the ability to produce any kind of sound and any to make any combination of sound. Though it is very strictly related to only the particular sound combinations as well as the particular sounds with respect to any specific language. So these are the standard definitions of the phonology. Now, it would be very interesting over here, again, to make a comparison between phonetics and phonology. Phonetics, study of human speech sounds. All those sounds which I can produce as human beings, regardless of that these sounds are specific to any language. If you remember in phonetics, we discussed in detail that there are the different sounds which are able which a human being is able to produce and they are the meaningful sound so phonetics is study of all human speech sounds would not it is not about any combination of sound it is not about certain patterns it is not about any system of language but on the other hand what phonology is yes phonology is study of human speech sounds human speech patterns in relation to a particular language. So this is the basic area where these two different levels of language, they have a difference. But once again, I should make it clear over here that phonetics is a big branch of linguistics. It is a broader level of linguistics where all human speech sounds are included. And phonology is, in fact, an offshoot of phonetics. In beginning of modern linguistics, there was no concept of phonology, rather there was only a single concept that was phonetics. So all about the human speech sound, their patternings and their relation to a particular language, it was all considered in the area of knowledge of phonetics. But later on in 1960s with Roman Jacobson and the Prague School, they were the first one who made the difference between phonology and phonetics and then they introduced a new branch which is known as phonology. So phonology is basically an offshoot of phonetics. Now, phonology versus phonetics. What a phonetician is concerned about and what a phonologist is concerned about. A phonetician who studies the human speech sound is concerned about and describes the speech and understand the mechanism of speech production and perception. Again, what we have discussed already in articulatory and auditory phonetics, how the human speech sound, they are produced and how the human speech sound, they are received. This is all about the concern of a phonetician. Plus, a phonetician also describes speech sound in ways that are close to the speech stream, focusing 
on production, acoustics and perception. Once again, its primary focus is how the humans, they utter different speech sounds, how we produce speech sound, how these sounds, they are transmitted from the one source to another source, from speaker to listener and finally, it is concerned about the how these speech sounds, they are received and perceived with respect, uh, with respect to auditory phonetics. So this is the concern of a phonetician. But on the other hand, if we consider what are the jobs of uh, phonologists, then phonologist is a person who describes speech systems for particular languages and works to show how sounds may change based on other sounds in same environment. How that we, when we produce different sound, they are combined and while combining them, while making certain patterns, how they change their shape, how they are influenced by their surrounding or by their neighboring sound. So this is a study uh, with respect to phonology. At the same time, a phonologist is concerned about and he tends to be more abstract because he is talking about not only the pure speech sounds but it also takes into account uh, uh, according to the abstractions while producing human speech sound. When we speak a certain language, there are certain abstractions as well. There are the different combinations which are expected with respect to language. There are the different patterns which are made with respect to different language. So phonologist, it is a bit abstract study, dealing not directly with the physical nature of speech. Yes, that is the concern of phonetician, the physical nature of speech, what the speech is composed of, sound waves, what are the factors in sound waves that are important, amplitude and frequency. So these are the physical phenomena, these are the physical things. So the study of phonetics is a bit more physical, more uh, worldly, but on the other hand, the study of phonology is a bit abstract with respect to different combinations it study and with respect to the patterning it takes into account. But rather with largely unconscious rule for sound patterning that are found in the mind brain of a native speaker. For example, as a native speaker of English language I know that the three sounds like pa, e and ga, these three sounds they can be convert, they can be mean combined uh, to make a certain pattern like pa, e and g combined pig, ga, e and p can be combined as gip, but ga, p, i is a pattern which almost seems to be ridiculous with respect to English language. What does that mean? Ga P I Ga P mean when a person who is a native speaker of English language he would hear to certain uh, these combinations he would find it rather illogical he would find it that it is not possible to produce certain these patterns so these this knowledge is mean uh, it is located in the minds of the uh, native speaker it is located in the minds of the uh, in the minds of the in the brains of the native speaker that they unconsciously learn as well as they unconsciously know that what are the sound which could be combined with what are the different sound patterns which what that are possible and what are the different sound patterns that are impossible so this is um, this is bit more abstract because we are studying something which is not directly observable rather it is unobservable because it this uh, kind of knowledge it uh, it resides in our unconscious part of the brain. We have this knowledge without knowing with that how we have this knowledge. As a native speaker of Urdu language, I know what are the words in the Urdu which are possible. Like tohmat, like uh, kutta, like kitab, 
like bakri. These are the all words, sounds which are combined to produce certain words, but they are possible. Like, but if I say so, if I listen, if I hear to a certain word like somebody saying batamat, so batamat sounds are there, bata, mata, they are combined, but as a native speaker of Urdu language, I know, but this combination of sounds is not possible. This combination does not have any meaning with respect to my Urdu language. So this way, phonology, it is more about the abstractions. It is more about the abstract rules which are found and which are, which are their native speakers, they are having unconsciously. But phonetics, it is more physical study because it actually deals with the sounds, which it actually deals with the phenomena of the sounds and the sound waves. But on the other hand, phonology, more abstract form. So this is the way how the phonetician, his job is quite different from a phonologist. And this difference can also make you clear that how the study of phonetics is totally different from study of phonology. But once again, phonology is an offshoot of phonetics. Phonology is a sub-branch could be considered as a sub-branch of phonetics because phonetics you can consider it as a whole a whole containing all the human speech sound and then in phonology we pick certain sounds with respect to a particular language so this way phonology is an offshoot of phonetics but at the same time it is quite different branch of knowledge from phonetics now phonology. When you study phonology, you have phonological knowledge, what would it permit us to? The phonological knowledge permits us to produce sounds which form meaningful utterances. Yes, that in phonology, we are, phonology with respect to a particular language, we are very much concerned with the combination of sounds which make, which have certain meanings. That we combine certain sounds and the combination of the sound, the, it should be meaningful with respect to that language. As I explained previously that the sound combinations which are meaningless, they are not allowed, they are not permitted with respect to a language. Secondly, the phonological language, it helps us to have the knowledge on the basis of which we can recognize the foreign accent. Yes, a person who is a foreign, a native speaker of English language and a person who has learned English as a second language, if you hear both of these people, you can quickly make the difference which is the right accent and which is the perceived accent, accent or which is the granted accent or which one is the learnt accent. For example, compare the English news on BBC and compare the English news on your Pakistani channels, the English news. The English newscaster on BBC and the English newscaster on PTV, both of them would be having a totally different accents. So how we know that they have the different accent and which one is the standard one and which one is the learned one? Definitely, this is because of the knowledge of the phonology phonological knowledge about English language, language helps us to make difference between the different foreign accents. And at the same time, I'm not making uh, the accent difference, difference because I am a Pakistani, I have learned this English language. But within English standard, there are different accents. For example, the Scottish English, the Irish English, and the British English. This, they all have the one English language as their native language, but still they are very much different in their accent. And the people who have the phonological knowledge about English language, they can easily differentiate which one is a British accent, which one is a Scottish accent, and which one is an Irish accent.
So the phonological language, sorry, the phonological knowledge of a language helps us to differentiate between accents. What does phonological knowledge else do? Yes, it helps us to make up new words. As I mentioned, that the, according to this phonological rule, phonological knowledge, we know that the certain combinations of sound, certain patterns of sound, they are possible, and certain patterns of sound which are impossible. But again, certain, certain patterns of sound, they are possible, but maybe they are also meaningless. We will I will give you examples on the next page slides, but again, that sometimes we have certain patterns of sound, certain combinations of sounds which are possible, but still they are meaningless. But on the basis of that knowledge, we can make new words, we can create new words, we can come up with the words which were previously, they are, were not there, they were not having, having any meaning, but with our phonological knowledge, we can make them. What else we can do? We know what or is not a sound in one's language. Yes, what are the sounds which are there in English language? What are the sounds which are there in Urdu language? What are the sounds which are there in Arabic language? And at the same time, what are the sounds which are there in Arabic language but not in Urdu language? And what are the sounds which are there in Urdu language but not in Arabic language, the phonological knowledge once again would help us. For example, we know, because we know the phonology of Arab, Arabic and Urdu quite well, so we know that in Arabic, in Urdu we have the pa sound, but in Arabic we do not have this pa sound, pa Pakistan, pa pankha, but in Arabic we do not have this sound. So the Arabic, they, they have the pronunciation like Al Pakistan, they would replace pa sound with ba sound, banka, bank, uh, bank. So this way, pank, they would say pang, bank. So this way, they they would replace because in the Arabic language they do not have this pa sound. So this way, we can with the phonological knowledge, we can have knowledge. What are the sounds which are there in one, which are which are there in one's language, but which are not there in another's language? So this way we can make, we can have a great knowledge about the la sounds which are particular to a specific uh, language. Finally, the phonological knowledge it permits us to know what different sound strings may represent that when we combine different sounds and we make a string of different sounds what do they mean what are the combinations what does this combination mean what are these combinations stands for what is the meaning out of these combinations so these are all the usefulness about of the phonological knowledge once you have the knowledge about the phonology of a particular language, you can have all this knowledge related to that language. So, phonology is quite a distinctive branch of phonetics and linguistics, but at the same time, it is very important branch with respect to the knowledge about different languages of the world. So, so far we have discussed what phonology is, how it is different with from phonetics and how does this phonological knowledge it helps you. But now we will move towards the different terms which are used in linguistics, in phonetics and phonology and these terms they are quite popular in use. So, what are these terms? But before starting what are these terms? We should know that how these terms, they are defined and how they came into being. The originating factor is a segment. What is a segment? A segment is any discrete unit that can be identified either physically or auditorily in the stream of speech. So when somebody is speaking out of that stream of speech, the every single 
discrete sound item that we can recognize is known as a segment. It is uh, actually division of a one combination or a pattern into the smallest indivisible parts. And that each that smallest indivisible part is known as segment. Now with respect to phonetics and phonology there are two different kinds of uh, segments. If we have the phonetics then with respect to phonetics that smallest indivisible segment of a sound is phone the sound that the sound again the phone word means sound so the smallest perceptible segment of a human speech is phone with respect to phonetics but with respect to phonology that smallest indivisible segment is phoneme. So these are the two terms which are quite popular in use phone and phonemes. You have I think you have heard about them. So once again phone is the with respect to phonetics is the smallest segment of a speech and phoneme is the smallest segment of speech with respect to phonology. We will study about them in detail now. Phone Phone is a speech segment that possesses distinct physical or perceptual properties. As I told you that phonetics is more physical subject. So phone is a more physical segment of a human speech sound. When we listen to a combination of speech uh, uh, sound uh, combination, then out of that the smallest indivisible segment is known as phone. It is a particular occurrence of a speech segment that this is a particular speech sound like fa, ba, ka, ta, da. Uh, when we hear sound, when we listen to the different sound, these all different segments of sound, they are phones. Once again, sounds. Another definition of phone is it is the basic unit revealed via phonetic speech analysis. When we phonetically analyze a language, a speech, then the smallest segment of that phonetic, phonetically transcribed speech is phone. So that is a phone. But phoneme, the Greek word phonema, it is actually taken word from the Greek word and what does the phonema means? Phonema means a sound uttered. Any sound that is uttered is known as phoneme. In human language, a phoneme is the smallest unit of speech that distinguishes meaning. Like on the basis of what that we can create meaning. We can easily distinguish one phoneme from the other. Like I, we, pa and fa. We know that these are two different phonemes. It's because when I pa, when I put sound pa in, in front of it, pit, p, pa, i, t. My, the other two segments are it. And when I put pit, pa, then it makes pit. And if I make, if I add fa sound, then it makes fit. So these two sounds, pa and fa, they create the difference of meaning. So we can call them phonemes. Phonemes are not the physical segments. Once again, how phonetics, phonology, they have a difference. Phonology, it has phoneme. Phonetics, it has a phone. So phone is a physical segment. But phoneme is not a physical segment, but abstractions of them. Out of that physical segments, we can create abstractions. We have abstractions actually, which are known as phoneme. The ta sound. Now I give you an example. The ta sound found in words like tip, stand, writer, and cat are examples of phonemes. Now all of these words, they do not have the phone ta, rather they have the phoneme ta, tip. Here ta sound is phoneme. Stand, at second place the phoneme is ta. Writer, at third place 
the phoneme is t and cat at the last place the phoneme is t at ka in cat we cannot say that the ta sound is a phone rather it is a phoneme because inside this patterning the ta sound is something which makes creates a difference for example if i replace ta with pa then c a p cap now with the pa sound it becomes cap and cap is something totally different from cat so this way the phoneme it is different from it is something a smaller segment that creates the meanings so that is a phoneme now history of phonemes so because in phonology we are very much concerned with phonemes though we will make difference between phoneme and phone but at the moment i am more concerned about phoneme history of phonemes from where this idea of phonemes emerge actually the term phonemes an abstraction was developed by the polish linguist jan nishla bodian da kartney and his student mikolay krozowski during 1875 to 1895 during this duration they have they introduced this uh, idea of phoneme and when they use this term they used is as with the spelling phonema and they were having like spelling f o n e m a phonema and phonema they call it the basic unit of what they call psycho phonetics because they were more concerned about the psycho phonetics with respect to human speech sounds in a relation to psychology in relation to the mind in relation to the brain psycho phonetics so they introduced this terminology phoneme as phonema during the 19th century later on the concept of phoneme was then elaborated in the works by nikolai terbeskoy and others of the prague school i must mention over here that the prague school it played a very important role in the evolution in the evolution or process of phonology as a discipline so this the proponents of the prague school they were the first one who came up with the idea of phonology so they adopted this idea of phoneme and terbeskoy and the other members of prague school like i must mention roman jacobson edward sapper uh, leonard bloomfield and ferdinand de saussure these were the other structuralist along with the prague school the structuralist they also adopted this idea of a name and they used it so this way during the 19th century the end of the 19th century this idea of a name it was introduced and it was adopted by the prague school in the structuralism now when this phoneme the idea of phoneme it was developed then a phoneme theory a kind of phoneme theory was also developed so what was this phoneme theory again for the phoneme theory which takes into account the phoneme as a smallest segment of a human speech sound so i as i men was mentioning that the structuralists they adopted from the prague school the idea of phoneme and some structuralists though not sapper i'm not talking about the edward sapper but the other uh, structuralists as i mentioned the bloomfield and ferdinand and de saussure they initially rejected the idea of a cognitive or psycholinguistic factor for the phoneme because they were more concerned with phonology the people who originated this term they were interested in psychophonetics more interested in uh, in the relation of linguistics with psychology but on the other hand the prague school they adopted the idea of a name but they rejected the idea of a name in a relation to psycholinguistics or in relation to psychophonetics because they consider that this word phoneme this term phoneme it does not have any function with respect to psycholinguistics the correspondence between symbols and phonemes in alphabetic writing system is not necessarily a one to one correspondence once again another idea 
about the phoneme that when we talk about the human speech sounds as oral and hum speech and the sound and the human speech in a written form in both cases the phoneme is something different because the phoneme is an idea about the oral speech it is not about the alphabets in the written speech so this because of this reason there is no one to one correspondence between the oral sound and the written symbol once again another idea but by a structuralist Ferdinand de Saussure so because because of this say, reason we can say that phoneme it has no one to one correspondence with its uh, written symbols take the example of sha sound s u g a r sugar now the sound in oral form is of sha but in written form it is only s that is producing sha sound take the example of shoes now s h o e s now the s and h these two alphabets in a written form they are creating sha sound but in oral form this is once again the sha sound and is represented by a single phonetic symbol so this way we can say that the phonemes they do not have any one to one relation with their written symbols so i hope this thing is very much clear uh, that how the phonemes they are do not match with their phonetic symbols in written form and in or and in actually written alphabets form so next next about phoneme theory phoneme theory according to it the phoneme is the fundamental unit of phonology which has been defined and used in many different ways virtually all the theories of phonology hold that spoken language can be broken down into a string of sound units and that string of sound unit in that string of sound unit every single sound unit is known as phoneme so with respect to phonology the phoneme is the smallest indivisible unit of a sound of a language and that each knowledge has a small relatively fixed sets of these phonemes once again the difference between phonology and phonetics because phonology is with respect to certain language so similarly the idea of phonemes is with respect to language the phonemes the number of phonemes the patterning of phonemes the phon patterning rules for phonemes it is these things are different for different languages because for every language there are different sets of phonemes which are accepted so this way this is quite a generalized idea of phoneme which is can be accepted for all languages of the world but at the same time phoneme different for different languages most phonemes can be put into groups for example in english we can identify a group of plosive phonemes if you remember from phonetics what are the plosive that when you pre produce the sound a puff of air is released like pa ta ka ba a puff of of air is released so these are the plosives so these are the plosives which exist in english language and there are the group of voiceless fricates like tha sha sa ha and so on so this way on the basis of phonetic knowledge and phonology we can differentiate di between different phonemes within uh, in different languages because they have the different articulatory and auditory qualities they have the different manners of production and different places of production so we have a complete set of distinctions and if you remember previous in previous lectures we have studied uh, english phonetics or what we said that the english phonetics how the different sounds in english language the consonants and the vowels they are produced with help of different uh, organs and with the uh, play, with different places and how they differ from each other and what are the different things which make them actually what we can call over here are the distinctive features 
every phoneme in English language it has and and not only in English language but in all languages they have different distinctive features and on the basis of which we can have distinctive feature analysis so this way we can distinguish it, distinct can distinguish between different phonemes now what more about the phoneme theory an important question in phoneme theory is that how the analyst can establish what the phonemes of a language are I mean how you can define phoneme that what are the phonemes in a particular language the most widely accepted view is that phonemes are contrastive and one must find cases where the difference between two words is dependent on the difference between the phonemes for example consider the examples of two words pin and pan now in both these uh, words the first and the last sounds in alphabets they are same but the difference is of the phoneme in between them in the first word pin the mini, the middle phoneme is e sound a vowel whereas a short e a vowel but whereas in pan there is a vowel a sound so this on the base of this vowel sound or a phoneme these two words they are different pin is something different pan is something different they have the difference of meaning so to answer this question that how we can define a phoneme in a language is that simply that you can conduct a test that how that you can make can that how a single phoneme it can create a difference between two words if you only alter uh, that single phoneme the whole word gets changed the whole meaning gets changed so this way we can identify where is what is a phoneme and what are the phonemes in in a language so so far we have discussed phoneme what are what are the different views about phonemes how they can be identified so once again moving back to what the difference between phone and phoneme that how we can recognize that in uh, if we are studying a book where we can find a phone and where we can find a phoneme the linguists they have used different symbols when you see the symbols like this these slashes they stand for the phonemes like look at this symbol this symbol the slashes they represent the phoneme and if we represent the phonetic symbols and we put slashes outside them then we are talking about differentiating the single phonemes in that sound patterning but if we put these square brackets instead of these slashes then inside these brackets we do not have phonemes rather we have phones so this way in written form we can identify between phones and phonemes for example the vowel phoneme the vowel phoneme in the word beadent abed and bean is represented as e now this is the phonetic representation of phoneme the e vowel as phoneme in between two slashes but if i represent the phone the phone e vowel then this is the representation for phone e so how we can recognize with the help of these brackets if we have slashes we have phonemes if we have brackets we have phones now phones and phonemes once again sequence of phoneme because i mentioned that phonology is not only about the study of sounds but it is more concerned about the patterning of human sounds about the structures how the different phonemes they can be combined to create different pattern and their patterns how certain patterns they are possible how certain patterns they are impossible and how certain patterns they give certain meanings now our next topic is sequences for phonemes now for that i have taken an example of the four phonemes these four phonemes are 
four sounds ba, la, e, and ka. If I combine these four sounds in four different ways, eight different ways. Now look at the first four ways. Ba, la, e, k, blake. As an English, having English phonological knowledge, I can say that this is a pattern which is possible. Ka, la, e, b, clip. Somehow possible. B, ba, e, la, ka. Bilk sounds possible. Ka a e la b kilb somehow possible. But now again look at the other category that is impossible one. La ba ka e la ba ki. I as a knowledge having knowledge of English language, I, it it seems inappropriate to me. It seems that this sound the patterning it is not possible. E la ba ka, ba ka e la, e ba la ka. Now all these combinations, the last four patterns that I have mentioned with respect to English phonological knowledge, these patterns are not possible. So this way there are certain rules which tell us that the different sequence of sound that are possible and there are different sequence, sequences of sound that are impossible though but once again the idea of meaningfulness and meaninglessness is again there I just bought a beautiful new Blake what is a Blake I just bought a beautiful new Bickley what so this way if you uh, say certain stat statements if you pronounce certain words the, the other listeners they would be quite surprised about the combination of sound that you are producing so there are certain patterns of sound which are possible and certain patterns of sound which are not possible. The knowledge of phonology of a language helps you to have this knowledge that what are the sound sequences which are possible and what are the sound sequences which are not possible. Now as I have mentioned that there are certain sequences of phonemes which are possible which are and certain which are impossible. So your knowledge of language for example if my focus is on English language then my knowledge of English tells me that certain strings of phonemes are possible, they are permissible and others are not. That's why ba ka la e combination that makes a buckley does not sound correct with respect to English language because it violates certain phonological rule. It violates the restrictions and sequencing of phonemes. That is, it violates the phonological rules of English language. And these phonological rules, the English the native speakers of English la uh, language or the learners of English language, they can acquire it. So on the basis of phonological knowledge of a certain language, you know about the phonemes, you can have the knowledge about the sequencing of phonemes. Now another term which is quite in use in phonology is the idea of minimal pairs. So far we have discussed phones and phonemes. Now minimal pairs. What are the minimal pairs? Minimal pairs are pairs of words or phrases which differ in only one phonological element. If in two words only one phonological element is different such as a phone or a phoneme. Now I am not restricting that it should be a phoneme because it can be a phone, it can be a phoneme. If one phonological element, it creates a difference between two words, then that two words, they make a pair which is known as minimal pair. For example, bit and pit. In both these words, the first two letters, the last two letters, they are same, it. But the first, look at the first sound. In the bit, it is ba, in pit is, is pa. So because of this one phonological element that is ba and pa, one 
sound change and the whole meanings get seen so this combination this pair of words is known as minimal pair take another example tip and dip again the last two words they are same but only changing the first phonological element ta into da the sound the meanings everything gets changed tip changes into dip and not only the sound gets changed, but the meaning gets changed as well. Take another example. Fan, van. Again, one sound, fa and wa. These two sounds are different and once again, the whole meaning gets changed. So this way, the minimal pair, we can call them a pair of words in which only, which only differ with respect to one phonological element that can be a phone or that can be a phoneme. Now four golden rules for minimal pair in English language in English language are there. What are these? Number one. The minimal pairs must have the same numbers of sound. Yes. That we can call pit and pat as minimal pairs. But pit and packet cannot be the minimal pairs because the number of elements phonological elements they are different in both words so this way for having making a minimal pair you should have the same number of phonological elements in two words the second rule the minimal pairs must be in identical in every sound except for one mean one phonological element is changed but all other phonological elements they should be same third rule the sounds that is different must be in the same position in each word for example between fan and van the one phonological element that is different is fa and wa and it is existing at initial position in both words so it can be a minimal pair but fa, fan and fab, they cannot be minimal pairs because in one I am changing one place and, one, and another I am changing another place. So for phonological elements, they, the uh, element that is changed, it should be at the same position and level. The final rule, the words must have different meanings. So, in minimal pairs, when you change that one phonological element, the whole meaning should get changed. These are the conditions for having minimal pairs. If certain pairs, they do not follow, or even one, even a single rule of these uh, for minimal pairs, it would not be known as a minimal pair. With respect to difference between phone and phoneme, once again, there is a procedure for identifying that whether or not the two sounds they represent the same or different phonemes because sometimes it happens that sound is same phone is same but phonemes are different so this way we can identify the uh, that whether this sound is a phoneme or not so what is the procedure we pose certain questions on that sound first question that is posed is that are the sounds in complementary distribution the sound they have the complement distribution if you have yes yes then you have to pose the question are the sounds phonot phonetically similar once again if you have yes then you pose a question they are allophones of the same phonemes it means they are not the phonemes they are allophone and if you get the no for that uh, question that the sounds phonetically similar if you get no then it means they belong to two separate phonemes but on the other side if you get for the very first question no then ask does substituting one sound for the other change meaning yes no if it is yes then again they belong to two separate phonemes it means they are different phonemes but if the answer is no, then they are the free variations of the same phoneme. So this way we can identify, we can differentiate between two phonemes 
uh, with respect to single sound because as I told you that sometimes phones are same but phonemes are different. Now next terminology is allophones, another term used in phonetics and phonology. Allophone is a combination of two words allo and phone. Allo means other, phone means sound. So allophone means together another sound or it is actually one of a set of multiple possible spoken sounds or phones used to produce a single phoneme. So now out of one phoneme we are getting two phones. Previously we discussed that out of one phone we can have two phonemes. But now out of one phoneme we can have two phones. And that two phones that are out of one phoneme they are known as allophones. For example there are two words like pin and spin. If you are the native speaker of English language, you will try to produce P-I-N as pin, a, la, a little puff of air with P, that is like in, when in Urdu we produce pool, P sound is there. Similarly, in English, when we produce the word pin, a P sound comes out. But when we say spin, the pure P sound is observable, spin, spa. So only the single pa sound is uh, audible, but no pa sound is audible. But pa and pa in phonology they are the variations of single phone, a uh, phoneme rather that is pa. So this way we can say that these two variations, these two phones out of one single phoneme, they are the allophones. They are the allophones of the uh, phoneme fa. Now, the allophones term was con coined by Benjamin Lee Waugh, a uh, proponent of structuralism in 1940s and in doing so he placed a cornerstone in consolidating early phoneme theory. As I told you, the phoneme theory, it emerged out of the work of Prague and structuralist school. So, the Benjamin Lee Waugh, if you remember, he has a lot of work with uh, Sapir as known as sapir waugh hypothesis, the same person. The same person, he introduced this idea of allomorphs. The term was popularized by Trager and Bloch in 1941. They, ha writ they have written a paper on English phonology and went on, went on to become part of standard usage within the American structuralist tradition. Central concept, the phoneme is the idea that it may be pronounced in many different ways. So what is the idea of allophone? That one phoneme, it can be produced in different ways. As I gave you example that phoneme is pa but it can be produced, pronounced in two ways like pa and pure pa, as in pen and as in spin. So this way one phoneme with two phones. Now in English, what is the importance of this allophones in English, BBC pronunciation? We take it for granted that the ra sound in a ray and tray are the same sound as the C because they are the same phoneme but in reality the two sounds are very different the ra in re is voiced and non fricative and while the ra sound in tre is voiceless and fricative so this way you know the one phoneme but with two different pronunciation with two different kinds of sound so these are the allophones of ra phoneme. In phonemic transcription, we use the same symbol for both. When we are phonetically transcribing certain sound, we do not have a peculiar uh, difference that we will uh, pronounce it like uh, as allophone, whether it is an allophone or whether it is a pure morpheme. We do not have any pure distinction we, because we use the same symbol. But we know that the allophones for of ra include the voiced non-fricative sound because if we if you look at the dictionary 
uh, uh, mean uh, more accurately you will see that when it is a voiced non fricative ra sound the ra sound is in, in inverted form if you look at it the ra sound it is in inverted form and when it is the voiceless fricative ra sound then it is the straight one in theory a phoneme can have infinite number of allophones but in practice for our descriptive purposes we tend to concentrate on a small number that occur most regularly mean it can happen according to even a single person the sound the the the, the sound utterance of a single phoneme it can be changed but we cannot take into account all of these variations rather we take some particular one into account and the, and we study them in phonology now free variation the free variation complementary distribution another important term in uh, with respect to phonetics and phonology the complementary distribution is known as allophonic variation as i told you one phoneme it can has different uh, utterances and they are known as allophones and these allophonic variations they have a complementary distribution uh, pattern on the phonetic environment the phoneme occurs they occur in different ways like la sound in english now what is a free variation free variation is the allophonic variation independent of the phonetic environment the phoneme occurs in random interchangeability that when we pronounce a phoneme we are not very much concerned with its phonetic environment rather we are very much concerned with the standard allophonic variations and such variations are known as free variations now if you want to see the example of free variation look at this yes where is the difference if you look at the baskets good have you seen it in one in on one basket it is written tomato and if you look at the second one the it is written tomato now two different pronunciation tomato tomato so these are these are the free variations of a single phoneme this is the way how the allophones allophonic variations they occur with respect to certain phonemes because with respect to different accents now i have quoted an another example look at this old song of 1930s you say either and i say either you say neither and i say neither either and either neither and neither let's call the whole thing off so if you observe where is the difference neither neither either either the way of pronunciation is changed words are same but they have different accents and they have different pronunciation the phonetically they have the same transcription uh, so, uh, sorry in the written symbols they have the same orthography but in phonetic transcription they have the different sounds and that is called as allophones of the phoneme or in this process is known as free variation and such cases are quite obvious in many languages of the world so this is not in particular to english language it happens in all languages of the world so free variation unlike a speaker of english a native speaker of urdu hindi could not ignore the difference between aspirated and unaspirated sounds when speaking or hearing them for example because we are the native speakers of urdu we have a very much fixed uh, concern about them and we cannot ignore an english speaker he can ignore the free variations in sound but we cannot ignore with respect to urdu language to a speaker of urdu the aspirated sound pa is as different from unaspirated as pa for example if i in say urdu phool in if i write it phool it has a total different 
way of writing like from the word like pankha. In pankha it is pa, in pool it is pa. It, they have the total different written form, they have the total different pronunciation form. So this way we can say that the in, in our language this variation it is of very much importance. Similarly, Urdu Hindi, it contains many words that are pronounced in nearly the same way. Except that one word will have an aspirated sound, whereas the other word, it would be non-aspirated one. For example, look at these words, Kapi and Kapi. The Kapi in Hindi, it means something meaningful, but Kapi, it is a copy in English. Pal. Now, pal, if I produce pa sound, then this pal means a knife, edge. Is chaku ka pal bahut tez hai. Pal means the edge of the knife. But if I ignore pa sound and if I say pal, then this pal means take care of, this pal means movement, aaj kal ka ek pal, ek pal ke liye. This may, this pal is totally different from pal. So this way, this difference of free variation, this difference of aspirated and non-aspirated sound is very much important in Urdu and Hindi languages because they are very much similar as you know. So in our lecture today, we discussed a lot about phonology, about phones, about phonemes, about allophones, about free variations, all those terms which are quite closely in link with phonology. I hope this knowledge will help you to make get a clear understanding of what phonology is. Inshallah next week we will continue with phonology and we will be more concerned about the phonological features of the language and out of them we will discuss the co-articulation effects as well as the paralinguistic features which are of concern of phonology. So, uh, see you next week. Allah Hafiz.